following us, especially when it comes to the rate of infections during this past seven days? Good evening, Faith. Um, I, if we look at the data um, across all indicators nationally and by province, South Africa is past the worst of its Omicron wave, uh, with nationally the number of uh, confirmed cases and test positivity rate peaking about two weeks ago and on a steady decline. But nationally, hospitalizations have also peaked. Um, and so it's, it's been a, a steeper or rapid surge towards a peak, but also a much shorter time to peak as compared to to the previous waves, about half the amount of time. Significantly, too, if we look across the indicators, during this wave, there's been a distinct difference where there's a decoupling or weakening of the link between those infections and severe or acute outcomes of hospitalizations or deaths um, with uh, the number of uh, hospitalizations and um, outcomes of death being significantly lower than as compared to previous waves. Yeah. Uh, on the other side of it, I mean, the consistent conversation around the positivity rate. First off, let's talk a little bit about how significant is the positivity rate as opposed to the rate of hospitalizations. Should we be concerned that one day the positivity rate is standing at about 15 percent or so, then it rises to about 22.2 percent, then it goes back down again, and there's just the consistent fluctuations. Should that concern us? If we look at the firstly at the seven day average of that test positivity rate, I think it's most important to track that average because of fluctuations in testing over weekends and over the holiday period recently, more importantly. So that test positivity rate, that seven day average nationally has been steadily declining, coming down from a peak of just over 35% two weeks ago, and currently at just about 21.5% um, at the moment. So importantly, the trend in that test positivity rate um, is continuing to decline, albeit mm -hmm. slower than the trend in the number of infections, which is declining more rapidly due to the exaggerated decline with the reduced testing over the holidays. That test positivity rate is still high at above 21%. That's one in less than five tests returning a positive result. So I think that's one important point to track that test positivity and the the declining trend is, is crucial. Secondly, you touched on hospitalizations. I think that is probably the most important indicator during this wave because one, there's been that decoupling or weakening of the link between infections and hospitalizations. And secondly, hospital, we want to ensure that hospitals are not overwhelmed and we haven't seen hospitals being overwhelmed during this wave. So important to track that indicator too most closely. Yeah. I mean, you're speaking here, and I just want to stay on this uh, test positivity rate about the number of people that are actually infected. Um, in that case, would you say that the reason why hospitalizations are sitting at such a minimum is because we're not doing so badly when it comes to the rate of vaccinations? But are we supposed to be proud, really, in terms of the number of vaccinations that have, or vaccines that have actually been conducted in the country? Look, I think the... So Possibly one of the reasons that we're seeing the decoupling um, or fewer hospitalizations and deaths too is because of high levels of immunity, both through natural infection as well as acquired immunity through vaccination. So our current vaccination rate, if we look um, at that, the proportion of the total population fully vaccinated sits at just about 27% currently, mm. uh, which is lower than compared to developing countries. And if we just look at um, other uh, countries across the world. However, I think uniquely South Africa also has high levels of immunity through natural infection and seroprevalence uh, levels indicate between 60 to 80 percent of the population having been previously infected. So I think combined that that level of immunity is also contributed um, to that lower level of hospitalizations that we have seen during this wave, uh, possibly to um, or also to a, a less a virulent, a less severe uh, variant, the Omicron variant. It's difficult to disentangle uh, which effects are more important, but it's likely a combination of, of all of those effects that, that reflect in lower hospital, uh, hospital rates that we are, have been seeing during this wave.
Yeah, Dr. Rudon, you say something so fascinating. I'd like your, your, your just further expanding on it. Are you saying that about 70 to 80 percent of the population in South Africa or so have already been exposed to this COVID-19 pandemic at one level or another, and therefore the amount of immunity that we have been able to build throughout with the 70 or so percent of us that have been infected has added to the reason why we're not seeing so many people in hospitals, as well as this COVID-19 pandemic not having a dire consequence on especially those that are unvaccinated in the country? Yes, exactly. I do, I do believe that the high levels of immunity and previous infection have contributed to what we have been um, seeing during this Omicron wave, which is distinctly different to previous waves. Um, Sero surveys, um, which were conducted pre-Omicron wave, um, estimate um, that the sero prevalence levels across the country are between 60 to, to 80 percent. Mm. Um, in Gauteng specifically, if we hone in, uh, approximately 70 percent is the estimated sero prevalence level. So that's 70 percent of the population in Gauteng uh, being exposed and having natural immunity. So yes, certainly I believe that uh, the high levels of immunity, both natural as well as combined with acquired immunity through vaccination, have contributed to that lower or less severe outcomes that we have seen in general, but also a less virulent or less um, severe um, Omicron variant as compared to the previous variants that were dominant. We'll leave it there. Rodon Suleiman, Senior Researcher at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Thank you very much for your time. Well